Good morning. Good morning. I, I lost something here. Um, this is not my Halloween costume. It's the outfit I wore in my first real job, a job that I absolutely loved. My friend Allie, whom some of you have, she's been here a couple times in the, in the last couple months, um, and some of you have met her. Uh, my friend Allie said to me, Jim, have you ever told the Brooks School students that you were a kindergarten teacher once? And I said, well, no, I, I don't think I've mentioned that. And she said, you have to tell them. Now, I've known Allie for about 35 years. She used to be my boss. She, she's not my boss any anymore, but I still listen to what she says to me. So I was a kindergarten teacher 50 years ago. I taught woodshop to five-year-olds. And uh, I absolutely loved that job. You know, when I was growing up, my parents kept telling me they wanted me to be a big shot. They wanted me to be president of General Motors or the managing law partner of some big law firm or a famous architect. It really didn't matter what it was as long as it was important. So they weren't really overjoyed when I became a kindergarten woodshop teacher, teaching five-year-olds how to drive a nail. But I loved it, and I didn't think there was any job in the world more important than teaching young people. Now, just as for an example, this is an example of what my kindergarten students did in workshop. Th this, this chair was made by my daughter, Sarah, who was five years old and in my kindergarten class. Uh, and she made, this, she made this chair for her mom. Now, if you could have seen how proud she was at the age of five of making this chair, you would understand why I thought it was such an important job. And the fact that she made it for her mom made it really special. It's not fine furniture. It's a little wobbly. The chairs aren't quite straight, the legs aren't quite straight. It doesn't have a lot of padding. But you know something? It's the most important chair in our house because it's a chair of love. It's a throne of love because it was made by Sarah as a pure expression of her love for her mom. Other chairs in our house have come and gone, but this one is still there. And no king ever sat on a throne as important as this one. But now, as you can imagine from looking at it, as you can imagine from looking at it, this is not an easy chair to sit in. It's not easy to sit in this chair of love. It's a little hard to fit into. It's small, it's a little clunky, and if we ever want, if any of us ever want to sit in the chair of love, we have to make some changes to ourselves. We have to get a little smaller. We have to let ourselves be a little smaller. We have to be, let ourselves be a little more like a child, a little more trusting. In fact, I think if we really want to sit in the chair of love, we have to be willing to let go of our self-importance and let ourselves find out what it really is to be humble. Because really there is no love without humility. If we really want love, we have to think less of ourselves and more about others because love is serving others. It's not something we get, it's something we give. You know, on Halloween, we dress up as monsters, werewolves, ghouls, witches. We dress up as creatures that are more powerful than we are. Because we so often think that we need more power. We think that we have to win. We think that we have to overpower others to get along in life. And when I find myself thinking that, 
I'm going to try to remember the quote Molly read a few minutes ago from Jimi Hendrix. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the earth will know peace. I didn't know that quote until the other day. It was sent to me by another faculty member a couple days ago. It opened my eyes. I always knew that Jimi Hendrix was an amazing, amazing guitar player, but I didn't realize that he was also a religious thinker. But what he says in this quote is true, and it's really all that needs to be said and all that needs to happen. All that needs to happen is for all of us to let the power of love overcome the love of power. Because when we let love be in charge, when we let go of our sense of our own importance and surrender to the power of love, love will take care of us. No matter what our circumstances are, love will fill us with joy and a light and a strength that's beyond imagining. A strength and a joy that never ends. And we'll be able to sit in the chair of love forever. Thanks for listening. <laughs>